So when I come in and I start working with her, we've got a couple of opportunities that are trickling through. One of which is significant, which is the USIA show, which was the Arthas Americas. USA, USIA Art America, which was... The USIA was a thinly veiled diplomatic uh, and, and cultural and marketing ambassador of the USIS, which was CIA. And it was the organ that the United States used to go in and provide aid to different places and whatnot, and they provide technical, and suddenly they own your president. And so we knew all about that. And I, you know, going back to my illustrious you know, history of being beaten up by the FBI in the early 70s, you know, they knew all about me. But when I got there and started talking to them about getting my, my clearances for my passport in order to go travel with the shows, I said, well, do you guys know who I am? And they said, yeah, we do. And I said, I know who you are. And he goes, yeah, you do. And I said, so is there a conflict? He goes, nah, you're not dangerous anymore. And I was greatly insulted by that. I was no longer a dangerous man. But what was important was is that we organized first 30 and then by demand 50 pieces. Those 30 pieces went to Africa, went to nine countries in Africa. Now, the relationship between the USAA and the American art world is that the work is meant to be internationally exhibited. We happened to go to Joburg at a time that was months after Mandela had become president. We happened to be the first exhibition of art in the newly organized and equally shared Pretoria Art Museum, which is the National Museum of South Africa, the new Republic of South Africa. 30 pieces of Chicano art from self-help graphics. I tell you, that night, I walked in, I saw the art, I burst into tears because it was like, here we are. And then I think I related to you later on that night, somebody was saying, you know, oh, you Yankees are really doing it. And I'm saying, Yankees? Como que Yankees? Soy de Ista Ley. But you know, he was saying with this truth, which is this is American art. This is very unique American art. Uh, Amani Reza Baines and I were in a panel in D.C. prior to me taking off for Joburg, and we were on a trunk call with groups from Lusaka, from uh, Nairobi, from different countries that we were going into. And the idea was that we were going to talk about the arts. And Amani Reza Baines is like one of the most brilliant women you're ever going to meet. I mean, I just sit there and go, oh, because I can't do what she does. She's just too brilliant. I kind of make jokes and get through it. But we are sitting there as the expert panel on Chicano art and culture. Mostly because this guy says, oh, I don't want to go to Washington. You go, honey. All right, all right, I'll go. Hell yeah, you know? Anyway, all these educators and all these cultural activists and artists from different nations in Africa are trunked into this phone call. And they said, okay, we're here for Q&A. And so we did our little spiels and then Q&A. And every single one of them did the same thing over and again, which is they asked the question, then they answered it. And really what they were doing was using the question as a forum. And so the question would be, my favorite piece is, you know, Mortanio de los Muertos by Eduardo Oropesa. And the reason is, and yet, ta 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 and ten minutes later, then it would be like, so what do you think of the piece? And Amalia and I caught on pretty quickly and said, you know. But the thing that was so impressive was that these people were relating to this artwork because the themes were particular and in doing so, being truthful, were universal. They were American, they were Chicano, they were personal, and they radiated to different countries throughout Africa and these learned people. So that by the time we got there to a nation that understood the struggle for identity, that understood living in a subcultural world, these pieces were being celebrated. We went through the nine countries. We landed in, um, oh, I forget the name of the country, but the work first went to a country on the day of the revolution. And the American attaché went to the airport and spent the night with those five huge cases of the artwork, 30 pieces framed so that they didn't get damaged or, 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 or stolen. And then they got shipped out and, and, and we reorganized another nation. And at the conclusion of that nine nation tour, in which we were heralded internationally, and I mean, right, and, and not a peep. And then I sent out press releases and I called up the, the Times and I called, and I said, hey, you fuckers know what's going on here? Do you understand that for the first time in nine different countries they're seeing Chicano art and they're loving it? 
The USIA said, we'd like to send you back to work, but we don't want to because we decided to pick you up when they sent us to Europe. The caveat was, we need 20 more pieces. We had 50 pieces. Now, Los Angeles just opened up a big thing at the uh, El Arco in Madrid, which is a huge national art fair and festival, right? And in fact, I even excoriated a few people because I said, geez, you know, we're, we're destroying the Cultural Affairs Department, cutting back here and there, but we're still going to... Well, yeah, I mean, a curator rightly pointed out to me, Pilar Perez, who's a smart woman, she goes, Tomas, she goes, don't be stupid, you know, of course it radiates bad that we're cutting our program, but it's even worse if we don't go. Uh, you know, you're right. So they were just there. But then I couldn't help but tell her, you know, back in 95, Self-Help Graphics opened El Arco at the Gallery Baron von Thiessen. Von Thiessen was the preeminent art collector and influence of Spanish art and society. We went to Spain and we opened it. And we sent Yolanda Gonzalez. Because the first time for me to go to Africa was important, and I went to Soweto, and I went to Pretoria, and I went to Joburg, and I, and I talked about the art, and I met incredible people, and, and promoted the idea that, you know, Chicano art is American art, and, 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 um, and uh, what we were doing in self-help. But it was also important, I'm sorry, my pants are singing, my pants are flying. <laughs> uh, it was also important that we make sure artists were engaged and okay so a couple things in Africa all right number one I'm doing a spiel with a bunch of people and they keep coming up and this is in Soweto they keep coming up and touching me and I'm like what the hell's going on here and the guy explains to me and says Tomas he says people have seen Americans before but they've never seen a Chicano before and so they're just wanting to see what you're like. And I thought, my God, how freaking precious. So a month later, I'm sitting in the Gallery of Traves and I'm sharing my slides and I'm telling the story about how, what a great moment in my life when I realized that people are coming up and looking at me and touching me because they want to know what a Chicano looks like. So Alex Donis from the back of the room says, oh God, no, now they're all going to think we look like Tomas. <laughs> <laughs> And then the other one was that I'm in, I'm in, Joe, I'm in Soweto, and I'm at the art school that's in Soweto. And the whole place, it's, the whole place, you know these orange power cords? Everywhere, they're all over. You have to step over them everywhere. They're hanging there, because they all connect to a big choque that's about a half a mile down the road. That's where he gets his electricity from. He brings out student busts that are made out of compressed cardboard because they don't have enough materials. The sculptor's first year learn how to sculpt the cardboard, then they get clay. And they've got this electricity going on. They're recycling paper. Paper that is not used or sold is being recycled and it becomes particle paper and becomes the sketching pads that they make. And I say to Sydney, Sydney, how, how can you do it, man? How can you? you got nothing. He says, Tomas, he says, not having enough resources is not enough reason to not do art. And I thought, Man, that's a t-shirt, eh? <laughs> anyway, this show is so hot, they pick us up. We go to Barcelona, we go to Madrid, we go to Paris, we go to Aix-en-Provence, we go to everywhere. We end up going to Germany. I get to go to Germany, and I do a spiel at the America House. Same freaking thing. Dr. Horst Tan gets up and introduces Tomas Benitez. 45 minutes he introduces me out of my hour. Because he's talking about Chicanos and Chicano art and everything he knows. And so, finally, at the conclusion of, of, of his introduction, I had 15 minutes left and I say, uh, das alles. And I get a huge laugh because it was perfect. You know, and that's all. That's all, folks. That's all I need, you know, and it just became Q&A.